So the essence of the changes is really how we can better protect the public while also uh, being fair and having proper safeguards. There are significant changes in this round of uh, CPC amendments. I would uh, categorize them into three main groups. The amendments to what kind of sentences the courts can give, really to protect the public against people who are a serious threat. For example, people who commit serious cli crimes like rape, sexual assault against young girls, they go in into jail and then they come out and they do it again, they attack other young girls. So we are proposing a type of sentence called the Sentence for Enhanced Public Protection, or SEPP, where after you serve out a minimum sentence, let's say you've raped somebody and then you go in for a minimum sentence. At the time, you know, the sentence is due to finish, experts will do a proper assessment on you. Uh, and they will assess whether you're going to continue to be a risk to society. If uh, you are not a risk, you can be released. If you are a ris risk, then you will continue to be uh, in jail and your case will be reviewed once a year. Second type of powers, updating and clarifying the powers of police and other law enforcement agencies. For example, police powers of search in certain circumstances. Let's say you're accused of committing a crime, you know, accused of sexually assaulting someone. Police can require you to undergo a forensic examination, give a DNA swab to see if the DNA matches that found on the victim. But uh, you cannot be forced if it's a DNA swab from uh, intimate body parts. But if you refuse to cooperate, there can be uh, criminal consequences. Third, to enhance our court processes, there are some changes to you know make the trial process more transparent, fair, coherent, so the essence of the changes is really how we can better protect the public while also uh, being fair and having proper safeguards. No, no, not because of that, you know, but we have been seeing some of these cases. They are quite serious. We always review our policies, see how they can work better and we also study other countries. Some of the other countries have this uh, SEPP type of sentence. We thought that we should also introduce it. For example, let's take uh, serious violence or sexual crime. People can get killed, people can get seriously hurt, people can get raped and uh, these are all very serious. And let me give you a real example. May of 2022, a man was sentenced because he had sexually assaulted two of his grandnieces. It's really quite terrible. Before that, he had been previously convicted for statutory rape of his uh, six-year-old stepdaughter. So he attacked his six-year-old stepdaughter. He had been convicted. Then he assaulted his grandnieces, right? Predator. So in 2001, he was sentenced to imprisonment and caning, but for good behavior and so on, he was released uh, after 12 years in 2013. Two years later, after his release, 2015, while living with his sister, he sexually attacked one of the sister's uh, granddaughters. She was 10 years old, living with them. He then moved on to her younger sister, the, uh, another granddaughter, in 2017, and started sexually assaulting her too. And she was at nine at the time. So these girls, nine, 10, they are living in the same household. They, this is uh, like a, you know, authority figure, grand uncle, and he's assaulting them. What, you know, they are totally vulnerable. And this is after all his earlier records. The court noted that his risk of sexual reoffending was high and that he disregarded the consequences of his actions. And he had been caned, he had been jailed. So under the existing uh, law, when these kinds of offenders have finished their sentences, they have to be released unconditionally. Even if they are still of high risk and they are going to go and attack somebody else tomorrow, the day after their release. So, and when they go on to re-offend, it's another life completely and tragically, uh, disastrously affected. 
let me give you another example. Just, uh, I think, two to three weeks ago, a man was sentenced to 29 and a half years of jail and 24 strokes of the cane for raping his niece when she was seven. He then continued his sexual assault for four more years against a girl. She was sexually assaulted almost every week. You really ask which young girl or lady or woman needs to undergo this sort of treatment. SCPP is our response. So let's see how this will work in these cases. The court finds that this man has repeatedly uh, raped or sexually assaulted um, young people or young girls or women, you know, or otherwise comes to the conclusion that the court really can't tell whether and you know, 12 years, 15 years, 20 years is going to be enough because at the end of the period, he may or may not continue to be a risk. If the court thinks that and that, you know, he may well later on be a risk, these are all assessments. The court can say, well, you know, based on the facts, I'm just going to impose a normal sentence. Or if the court thinks that really there has to be an assessment at the end of the sentence period, the court can say, I impose an SCPP sentence. When the judge decides that SCPP is more appropriate, what the judge is saying is, I send you to jail for eight years. At the end of eight years, I want experts to look at you and decide whether you are going to be fit to be released or whether you're going to continue to be a risk and how much risk would you be posing to the community. The decision on whether to release him, it will be made by the minister, but based on expert viewpoints, assessing the expert viewpoints. If the uh, person in jail, offender, is no longer poses a high risk to society, he can be released. But if he continues to pose a risk, then he can continue to be detained. The case will then be reviewed every year. If the judge sentences someone to SCPP, what he's really saying is, this person, I think, needs to be assessed at the end of the sentence I'm imposing. You know, it can actually be in such a case that the judge may impose a shorter sentence because if you don't have SCPP, the judge might think to himself, I better not take a risk, I might, you know, let me impose a longer sentence. But with SCPP, the judge knows, well, I can impose a shorter sentence and at the end of the period, let's see, what the uh, assessment is. As for the parameters of the assessment, experts will look at and put up reports and the minister will then decide. Uh, this will include independent uh, risk assessment. We now are thinking in terms of IMH, but the details will have to be worked out. Prisons will also uh, put up a report and uh, will look at uh, the possibilities of rehabilitation. You know, they would assess how his behavior has been and there is an incentive for the prisoner, the person in jail, to actually reform because if he works on his reform and he works on his rehabilitation together with prisons, then he is likely to be released earlier. He knows that there is something for him to work towards. Uh, I think those concerns are unfounded. If you look at the bill, the power under section, the proposed section 34 is to search a place in order to investigate a specific arrestable offence and where the police believe that the item they are looking for related to the investigation is likely to be in the possession or control of the suspect. So it's not just random searches. It's always a balance. You have the rights of the individual, you have the rights of society. The police, if they reasonably believe there is likely to be the evidence in this place, then surely you would want them to investigate. Most often they are right, sometimes you know they don't find the evidence, but that's a balance that you strike. You can't say, oh, unless uh, they find the evidence, they shouldn't be searching, that's putting the cart before the horse. Uh, these amendments are more you know, technical. It's really lawyers will be looking at those, but they are important and needed. We are really codifying, meaning we are putting into rules 
a process so that it's very clear now everybody understands what the process will be and we did extensive consultations with lawyers as well as public